Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Oh, now, that was very weak. I didn't hear anybody say good morning back. Okay, are we ready? I want a nice big good morning. Good morning. That was pretty good. This is a special season of the church year, and you know what we call it? Advent. Can you say Advent? You did a good job. Advent. This is Advent. And when it's Advent, you know what something we do? We light the candles on the Advent wreath. You see it up there? How many candles are there? Count the candles. The blue candles. How many are there? Four. Yes, there are. There are four. You guys have the littlest voices. There are four candles up there, and every one we light, we light one each new Sunday up until Christmas. So when all four are lit, then what comes next? Christmas, right? We're going to light one today. And we remember when we light candles that we have to be careful and we have to pay attention, right? Because it's fire, and fire can burn people, so we've got to be careful with fire. You want mommy? Come on, come on down, mommy. She's coming. There she comes. Okay. Now, we are going to light a candle up here. We're going to light this candle right here. And would somebody like to help me light it? Anybody brave enough to light a candle? Mackenzie? Are you brave enough to light a candle? All right. Okay, Mackenzie. You can light it off of that. And you're going to choose any candle you want up here. And you will light it. Oh, what a nice job you did. Now pull that, pull that lever down, push it back up. Very good. Thank you. Didn't Mackenzie do a nice job lighting that? Maybe next week one of you other ones will have a turn. Now we are going to help the congregation say a prayer. And you guys have a line that you're going to say. I want you to stand up, and you have to use your really big voices this time. Stand up. If you're a kid, stand up. And if you're a mom or a helper, stand up. Okay, here is what you're going to say. Really loud, you can shout it, because it's important. Pay attention. Can you say that? Pay attention. Okay, now really loud, let's try it again. Really loud. One, two, three. Pay attention. Okay, everybody, you have your lines there. This is a prayer. Kids, you're going to start us out. Whenever I point to you, you're going to say your line, okay? Here we go. Be a dark and scary place. There are dangers and temptations all around us. We light one candle to remind us that our Lord is always with us. When we pay attention, we can see God. Christ is coming to save us. Amen. Now, I've got something for you, if I can get up off the floor. Oh, and I can. Look, we have Advent calendars. Starting on Tuesday, you get to open one door of your Advent calendar each day until it's Christmas time. And your moms and dads can help you figure that out. And you've got to find the numbers, number one, then number two, then number three, all the way down. Don't open them early, but every day you open one. You've got to pay attention and remember when it's time to do it. One per family, because these things aren't cheap, and you can share. <laughs> It's good to share. Well, that one's open. Here. You're welcome. Thank you all for coming up. Remember? Hmm? Oh, oh, Tegan, I'm sorry. I missed you there. You're welcome. All right. Everybody set now? Good. Thank you for coming up. You can go back to your seats. Remember to pay attention to what God is doing in your life.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Pay attention. Now there's an Advent theme that's getting some press these days. Pay attention when you're shopping or you might miss the best holiday sales. Pay attention to your diet or you'll gain unwanted pounds. Pay attention when you're on the road and whatever you do, don't text when you're behind the wheel. Pay attention to climate change and recognize that the choices we make today will impact the world for generations to come. Pay attention when you're in a public place, and if you see anything suspicious, notify the authorities immediately. Pay attention when you're traveling abroad and realize that Americans are at an increased risk of terrorist attack. Pay attention. That call to watchfulness, that call to stay alert, to pay attention, has always been part of the church's Advent proclamation. Jesus himself says in today's gospel, be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Advent texts like this one help us avoid the temptation to approach the celebration of Jesus' birth with frantic commercialism or sugar-coated sentimentality. These words call us not to ignore or gloss over the troubles of this world, but to pay attention to the brokenness that surrounds us. Because Jesus was not born to fill our Christmas stockings. Jesus was born to turn this world around. So pay attention. And as you do, watch for signs of your redemption. God, whose coming we await, is active, even in the midst of our turmoil and trouble. So do not be afraid. Do not despair. Do not give up hope. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh to heal the world's brokenness through his cross and resurrection 
and he promises to come again at the end of time to make all things gloriously, wonderfully new. The time in which we live, this age between Jesus' first coming 2,000 years ago and his return on the last day, this is a time to live with hope and courage, knowing that our future has already been secured by the risen Christ, who is stronger than any threat or danger. And as we pay attention to both the troubles of this world and to the promise of Christ to make all things new, we don't have to tremble with terror. We don't have to faint with fear. Jesus says we should stand up and raise our heads when we see these things happening, for our redemption is near. Our living Lord empowers us to be filled with faith and to be motivated by a desire to participate in the renewal and healing of all creation. David Lose has written, it's not, I think, violence that is the greatest threat to us today, but fear. Fear that drives us to forget who we are, to see people in need as the enemy, and to place securing our safety and comfort above meeting the basic needs of those in distress. Fear is more dangerous than violence because fear can lead us to forget our deepest identity and betray our most cherished values. So we pay attention to the world around us, but we will not be afraid. We acknowledge the danger, but we will not abandon our values. We remember the things that divide us, but we will not forget our calling to love one another as Christ has first loved us. We will not cower in the darkness. We will bear the light of Christ. We will feed those who are hungry. We will bring clothing to neighborhood school children. We will advocate for justice. We will seek better lives for the poor and the homeless. We will oppose violence in all its forms. We will comfort the grieving. We will care for creation. <clears throat> we will welcome those who cower in fear and speak words of living hope. We will pay attention to every evil that threatens God's good creation. We will be alert to everything that dehumanizes God's precious children. And we will look forward to the day when everything is made new when every tear is wiped away, when every sin is forgiven, even as we work together today for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when we pay attention, we will see the advent of our God. Arab American poet Naomi Shihab Nye shares a recent airport encounter that I read this last week. She writes, after learning my flight was detained four hours, I heard the announcement. If anyone in the vicinity of gate 4A understands any Arabic, please come to the gate immediately. Well, one pauses these days. Gate 4A was my own gate. I went there. An older woman in full traditional Palestinian dress, just like my grandma wore, was crumpled to the floor, wailing loudly. Help, said the flight service person. Talk to her. What is her problem? We told her the flight was going to be four hours late, and she did this. I put my arm around her and spoke to her haltingly. Shudawa. Shubidak habiti, stani, stani, shwai, min fadlik, shobit sewi. The minute she heard any words she knew, however poorly used, she stopped crying. She thought our flight had been canceled entirely. 
She needed to be in El Paso for some major medical treatment the following day. I said, no, no, we're fine. You'll get there just late. Who is picking you up? Let's call him and tell him. We called her son and I spoke to him in English. I told him I would stay with his mother till we got on the plane and would ride next to her, southwest. She talked to him. Then we called her other sons just for the fun of it. Then we called my dad and she spoke for a while in Arabic and found out, of course, they had 10 shared friends. Then I thought, just for the heck of it, why not call some Palestinian poets I know and let them chat with her? This all took about two hours. She was laughing a lot by then, telling about her life, answering questions. She had pulled a sack of homemade mamul cookies, little powdered sugar crumbly mounds stuffed with dates and nuts out of her bag, and she was offering them to all the women at the gate. To my amazement, not a single woman declined one. It was like a sacrament. The traveler from Argentina, the traveler from California, the lovely woman from Laredo, we were all covered with the same powdered sugar and smiling. There are no better cookies. And then the airline broke out the free beverages from huge coolers and two little girls for our flight, one African-American, one Mexican-American, ran around serving us apple juice and lemonade and they were covered with powdered sugar too. And I noticed my new best friend, by now we were holding hands, had a potted plant poking out of her bag, some medicinal thing with green furry leaves. Such an old country traveling tradition. Always carry a plant, always stay rooted to the ground. And I looked around that gate of late and weary ones and I thought, this is the world I want to live in. The shared world. Not a single person at this gate, once the crying and confusion had stopped, had seemed apprehensive about any other person. They took the cookies. I wanted to hug all those other women too. This can still happen anywhere. Not everything is lost. People of God, pay attention. The world seems to be coming apart, but it is still God's world. There is still hope. We are still called to love, to comfort, to share, and to befriend, to make of our very lives a sacrament of Jesus' peace. So stand up and raise your heads. For he whose birth we prepare to celebrate is at work among us today. Pay attention. The signs are all around us. Amen.
Emmanuel has come, is here, and is coming soon. Let us join in prayer for the church, the earth, and all those who are in need, and all receive what God promises to give. Come to the church, saving God, grant your people your redemption. Stand with all Christians who are persecuted for the faith. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal and Father John, for Hope Lutheran Church and their pastor, Mary, and for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America's presiding bishop, Elizabeth. Hear us, O God. Come to the earth, creating God. Protect the lands and seas from environmental disasters. Nurture the animals and plants that you have made. Hear us, O God. Come to the nations of the world, sovereign God. Inspire all leaders to work for justice. Bring peace to Jerusalem, Syria, and the entire Middle East. Bring peace to Nigeria, Mali, Sudan, Tunisia, and other places of Africa experiencing terror and conflict. Bring an end to terrorism and protect those who are most vulnerable. Hear us, O oh God. Come to all in need, mighty God. Protect those who suffer injustice. Comfort those who live in fear. Heal the sick. Accompany the dying. We pray especially for Ted, Catherine, Anne, Al, April, Matthew, Jack, Mark, Rosemary, Sue, Tom, Brian, and the family of Edward Zobian. Hear us, O oh God. Reveal yourself to this congregation and to our community, gracious God. Deepen our love for one another. We give you special thanks this day for Marcy, Elizabeth, Jennifer, Craig Jr., and Kyle, Ron, Karen, Jeff, Zach and Jesse, and Jeremiah. And we ask that you bless them and strengthen them in lives of faith and service. In this season, give us compassion for all who suffer and keep us from selfish excess. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy, Loving God, you bring to yourself all the faithful who have died. Strengthen us in holiness until with all the saints we come to see you face to face. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy, Receive our prayers, faithful God, as we watch and wait for your coming among us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks.